Hello everyone, I'm Joshua Gillespie and may the 4th be with you. Welcome to this special edition of the Muppet Show Vlogs. Now, seeing as how today is May 4th and it just so happens to sound like, may the 4th be with you. Fans have dubbed this to be Star Wars Day. And because of that, I have decided to review the episode of The Muppet Show with Luke Skywalker, C-3PO, R2-D2, Chewbacca, and this guy named Mark Hamill. I want to point out we'll be making the jump to light speed all the way to the fourth season of the show. But with that, let's talk about the story. Tonight on The Muppet Show, they have booked Angus McGonagall, the Argyle Gargoyle who gurgles Gershwin. The Argyle Gargoyle gargles Gershwin? Gorgeously! <laughs> However, unfortunately for him, and fortunately for us, there is a huge crash and explosion inside of the dressing room, and we see Luke Skywalker, C-3PO, and R2-D2, the stars of Star Wars. Kermit decides to cancel Mr. McGonagall and instead have the Star Wars crew be the guest stars for the night. Ted Kermit, this is an outrage! I demand my spot! Now, the reason Luke Skywalker is here is they are looking for Chewbacca the Wookiee, who has been kidnapped, and they are certain that this is the place where they can find him. Help, I am being held prisoner by a bunch of weird turkeys. It does rather sound like your show. Yeah, it does. Though Kermit has other plans for them. He wants them to perform. Listen, pal, we're on a mission. There's no way we're going to be involved in any third-rate variety show. <laughs> Second-rate variety show. Thankfully, Luke has a better idea and brings in his cousin, Mark. Run! Oh, boy, oh, boy. I'm a big fan of his. Halfway through the episode, the Star Wars characters hijack the Pigs in Space Swine Trek and plan to make a safe landing on the planet Coosbane. Oh, you call that a soft landing? I sprained my solenoids. But before they can do that, they come face to face with an evil fiend. Oh no! Death Vader! Who? As you would expect, they get to Coosbane, they battle Dirth Nader, and rescue Chewbacca, leading up to one final musical number where Kermit is able to get them to finally loosen up and join in the fun. Lucky I once saw a Fred Astaire film. Whew, now that was a lot. You look like you're about to click away though. You will watch the rest of this video. So, what do I like about this episode? Well, everything. This episode is basically flawless. Now, the three things I think of when it comes to this episode are, of course, Star Wars, but I also think of Jerry Nelson and Richard Hunt. Jerry Nelson just does an amazing job as Angus McGonagall. This could have been a character that, as soon as the Star Wars people showed up, they just pushed to the side and you never see him. However, Jerry does a great job of just slipping him in throughout the episode, even at the very end. Jerry Nelson also performs the eel that sings the song Three Little Fishies, which is extremely entertaining. Speaking of entertaining, Richard Hunt sings the two songs, ram a lam -a ding dong and Six String Orchestra. Now, I love every song in this episode, but Six String Orchestra is not only my favorite of this episode, it's my favorite musical number of the entire series. I just think it's a very inspiring song while also being extremely funny about not being so good at what you want to do, but never giving up on your dream and just keep trying and just have that hope that one day it'll all be worth it. That's something I can really 
relate to. Now, this is just a tiny little detail, but uh, Jim Henson predicted the future. Don't believe me? Look at the final musical number. As they're singing the song, When You Wish Upon a Star, a Disney-esque castle rises behind them. Look at this image. You have Star Wars, Muppets, and Disney. It's almost like Jim knew that in the future, all three of these would be together. Though, unfortunately, he didn't think to put Spider-Man swinging across or the Hulk running through. <laughs> now, if that had happened... Now let's talk about Star Wars. The characters just are great. They stay in character the entire time, only loosening up at the end, but they also do a great job at poking fun at themselves. I'm Dr. Strange Pork. Oh my, and I thought our names were weird. Also, this episode has one of the greatest running jokes of any episode. I have one very important question I'd like to ask you. What's that? <sighs> who's your tailor? I love that outfit. <laughs> Say, Luke, who's your tailor? I love that outfit. I'd like to think that whenever Mark Hamill is at a convention, at least one person goes up to him and asks him that. And if nobody does, start doing it. Speaking of Mark Hamill, Oh, gosh. You can tell how much fun he's having here. And finally, this is something I just love. It's the fact that they keep the episode the same. What I mean is, you know, the Star Wars people come in, and it's not just like, Oh, well, it's gonna be a Star Wars night! We're gonna change everything and make it Star Wars themed. Instead, it still feels like what the Muppet Show would have been if Angus McGonagall had been the guest, or whatever. It, they don't change it. They keep it the same environment, and I love that. So, what do I not like about this episode? I don't know. I really don't know. I feel like anything I say will just be nitpicking, and I wish I hadn't said for the one time only, I will say there's no problems with this episode back in my Alice Cooper review. Ugh. Because this is just a fantastic episode. Like, this is... If somebody is trying to get into the show, this is one I immediately point them to. Star Wars fans will love it. Muppet fans will love it. If you love both, you're going to really love it. Uh, well, I guess the thing I don't like about this episode is it's no longer part of the Star Wars canon. And before you say, it was never part of the Star Wars canon, yes, it was. Um, in a Star Wars magazine, they explained how it would fit into the timeline, it's a little bit before um, Empire Strikes Back. That's why when Luke is wearing his Bespin outfit, everyone asks, Who's your tailor? I love that outfit. Because he hadn't worn it yet. And in a Star Wars atlas, the planet Coosbane is mentioned. So it was technically part of the Star Wars canon, but now that cannon has been fired, and it's no longer part of it. Yeah, that's the only complaint I have. This is just... I keep saying it, this is a fantastic episode. Pretty much flawless. Um, definitely check it out if you never have. It's obviously available on YouTube. Season 4, at the time of this recording, has not been released on DVD. Um, you can find it on the Best of the Muppet Show. It also has the Paul Simon and I think Raquel Welch episodes. So you're getting three awesome episodes there. So if you're a fan of Star Wars, if you're a fan of the Muppets, if you're a fan of both, definitely check this episode out. And may the fourth be with you. Always. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Bishop.